Hello, friends, and welcome back to r slash pro revenge. Today we have two stories. And the first, thanks for the year of free rent in Brooklyn. So a friend and I move into this newly renovated apartment in Brooklyn. It's nice enough, but just about every one of the 14 units has some weird sort of problem. One unit had the hot and cold water mixed up, flush a few times, and get a heated toilet. One unit, none of the outlets are grounded. One unit, there are gaps around the windows. The problem in our unit was a leak in the air conditioner lines. The leak was probably on the roof, but we ended up with no AC. We call them and it takes a month to get someone. He refills the lines and a week later the problem comes back. We spend the summer getting the system topped up every week. At the end of the summer, they decide that our repairs and all of the neighbors were getting too expensive, so they send us bills. Our bill was in the tens of thousands of dollars. Recharging that system weekly must have been expensive. They also start trying to charge every unit for any infraction, like $100 for every unit for a single scrap of paper found in the hall. The tenants all get together to have a little meeting. It turns out that they never got a certificate of occupancy for the building. The city had it on the books as a furniture warehouse. So collectively, we all just stopped paying them. Rent, fines, fees, nothing. We retain a lawyer and just live there. The company tried to get us out by cutting lighting and other services. We contacted the lawyer, the company would get fined, and we get our lights back. They tried to change the main lock once, but we let the locksmith know what was going on, so he stopped. They didn't try a second time. The first floor of the building was an off-track bedding parlor. They were particularly noisy and obnoxious, so one resident called the health department over a moldy loaf of bread we found in the basement. One of my best memories was watching a bunch of guys in hazmat suits clear out the bedding parlor so they could run tests. Eventually, they tried to get the certs, but to do that, they needed to do inspections with the drywall removed. They tried to do it while we lived there, and the lawyer fought it for not being in a livable state. Finally, they realized they needed us out. If they got the C of O while we were still there, we'd owe back rent. They take us to court to get evictions. Lawyer gets everything pushed back as far as he can, but finally we go to city court. Lawyer points out that they're trying to evict 14 units, but you can't evict more than 10 at a time. Court rejects the case. I don't think their lawyer gets a single word in. So now we get a county court date for an ejection instead of an eviction. Again, lawyer pushes it out as much as he can, but eventually we go. Court agrees to eject us all, but sees the evidence of lighting and lock tampering asks our lawyer what would be a reasonable time frame. Lawyer asks for four months. Judge gives us six. Everyone stays until the last month. At the end of it all, we got to live in a newly renovated apartment in a trendy area of Brooklyn for free for a little over a year. B tries to destroy my orchard. I bankrupt her and get her house torn down. Sorry, might get a bit long. TLDR at the bottom. Well, let's start a few years in the past. My great-grandparents planted an orchard. It's now at least 120 years old. My grandparents and my parents were really proud of the peach trees growing in it and did their best to keep them in good health and well. We always threw a big party when the peaches were ready to be harvested and invited all of our friends and neighbors to it. I love those parties. The neighbors on the property to the south of our orchard were particularly fond of our peaches. They were a bunch of fine old people, and me and the old man, Sam, were pretty good friends. He taught me a lot about woodworking with hand tools only, and we had some great evenings in his workshop, and we finished many good whiskeys in there together. In return, he got a lot of fine peaches, marmalade, homemade peach liqueur, etc. Sadly, he died a good 10 years ago. Cancer's a real a-hole. His wife followed soon. Many suspected it was of a broken heart. They had no kids, so all of their property was left to the state except his tools and whiskey collection, which he had gifted me a few weeks before he died. In comes Karen. The name speaks for itself. Haircut, attitude, bitchiness, the whole deal. She bought the property of my late neighbors. We hadn't had the kind of money to buy it at that time, as we had met some dire straits the years before, and all our savings were gone. The first thing she did before she actually moved in was go around making demands of the neighbors on the surrounding properties. When it was finally our turn to listen to her gibberish, she told us that we needed to remove half of the trees as the leaves were blowing on her property. We told her in a polite way that we won't comply to her demands as the orchard is a vital part of our family heritage, tradition, life, and has been there at least 120 years. She was pretty pissed but did nothing for the time being. 
There are some things you need to know before I continue with the story. The workshop I mentioned before was situated right at the border to our property. It was a small timber frame building, at least 160 to 180 years old. The regulations in my state are pretty strict concerning old structures. Every structure over 100 years is protected and you need a special permission to tear it down. Failing to get this permission could lead to a hefty fine. To get the permission to build a new building, it has to be up to code and you have to ask your surrounding neighbors and if they agree, you're good to go. Except there is one specialty in my county. You have to keep a certain distance to the border of the property to allow emergency services full access to your property. If one of these requirements isn't met, then the building is illegal or at least only partially legal and can actually be ordered by court to be torn down. That might come in handy later. So, back to my Karen. After our first encounter with her, she did her best to pester the whole neighborhood. She got the neighbor's dog put down because he allegedly attacked her brat. It later turned out she faked the attack. The dog was the sweetest, the most innocent dog you could imagine. A Bernese mountain dog, big, but a real teddy bear. Anyway, she later got us to stop doing our annual peach parties as she called the police every time for various reasons. Noise complaints. We had a band playing there in the afternoon. Arson. We lit a fire in a designated fire pit in the middle of our property. She called the ATF on us, allegedly making moonshine. My dad had a license to distill for our own consumption. In short, she was a real pain in the bum bum. And after three years, we decided it wasn't worth it to deal with various officers and law enforcement agencies every time we threw a party and we decided to quit. After she had reached this goal, she resorted to pestering us to remove the orchard. We didn't cave in and some things finally started to get fishy. Somehow the tires of our trucks got slashed, eggs got thrown on our farmhouse, our cat disappeared and resurfaced a few days later in pretty rough condition. It looked like somebody tried to cut his tail off. Don't worry, he healed up completely, but we actually couldn't prove that she did all that. Then came the day she made her biggest mistake. She had a company come in sort of a secret operation and tear down the old woodworking workshop overnight. Two days later, they started building a big garage, recreational center house right where the shop was. But she missed one fine detail, which got pretty important later on. She didn't ask for our permission, nor for the neighbors. A short while after, the trees right next to her property started to get sick. The leaves turned brown in the middle of summer and the branches started to die. We lost four trees before we figured out the cause. Somebody had driven long copper nails into them. We had a suspicion, but we couldn't prove it. So we put up some trail cameras. Perfectly legal. This was our own property. We caught her red-handed. My dad confronted her. She apologized. And my dad, being the way too nice guy he is, wanted to let her off the hook. But not me. The nail she drove into our oldest tree was the final nail to her coffin. I started to investigate. I had some friends in the administration of our county and asked them to do some inquiries. Turned out she hasn't applied for permission to tear down the old shop, nor for permission to build a new building. I further did some inquiries on the borderline of our property. Turned out the old markers vanished over time and her building was about three feet on our property. After I gathered all this information, I presented it to my parents. At first, they were reluctant as they didn't want to start a neighborhood clash, but after I recalled all the things she did to us and our neighbors, they were in. So, let the games begin. First, we called the authorities on her for tearing down a protected building and presented them with all the evidence we gathered. Then we called the building authorities on her for building a building without permission, not up to code, and not only didn't she keep the required distance to the property border, she also built on our property without our permission. Long story short, turned out the workshop hasn't only been protected because of its age, but also because it was a historical landmark, which played a vital role in a conflict back in the 1860s. She got sued for this and had to pay a fine of an equivalent of about $150,000. She further had to demolish her newly built building, costing an additional $50,000 and got fined for this too, about $83,000. And had to rebuild the workshop on her own expense, which was another whopping $154,000, as it had to be period correct up to the smallest detail. Means it had to be built with the correct materials, with hand tools only and to the correct dimensions. As you can imagine, paying professionals to build quite a large timber frame building only by hand gets pretty expensive fast. So all in all, it cost her an equivalent of $437,000 plus further expenses as lawyers, etc. 
This caused her to go bankrupt, so she had to sell the property in the end, which my parents bought, by the way. Last I heard of her was that she moved back to the big city. Well, guys, this is the end of the video. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, be sure to leave a comment, like, and subscribe. I really appreciate it. See you soon.